Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using Clapeyron's theorem of three movements. Before analyzing, let's see the beam one time. In this beam, there are three spans, span AB, span BC and span CD. In the span AB, there is an UDL 12 kN per meter acting for the full span. In the span BC, there is a point load 25 kN acting at 2 meter from the point B. In the span CD, there is a point load 16 kN acting in the center. In this beam, there are 4 hinged supports in the point A, in the point B, in the point C and in the point D, there are hinged supports. Span AB is 4 meter long. Span BC is 5 meter long. Span CD is 3 meter long. In the point A and point D, there will be no movement because they are simply supported ends. So, we have to find the moments only in the point B and in the point C. So, the number of moments to be found is 2, MB and MC. To find these two moments, we need two equations. Using two spans, we can make one equation. Using the span AB and BC, we can make the first equation. Using the spans BC and CD, we can make the second equation. Now, let us take the spans AB and BC and make the first equation. Now, let us calculate the ordinates and draw the diagram. First, let us calculate the ordinate in the span AB. In the simply supported beam, if UDL is acting for the full span, the formula for the maximum bending moment in the mid span is WL square upon 8. Here, W is 12, L is 4. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 24. If in the simply supported beam, point load is not acting on the center, the formula for the maximum bending moment under the load is WAB upon L. Here, W is 25. A is 2, B is 3, L is 5. When we apply all of the values in the formula, we are getting 30. Now, let us apply the theorem of three moments in spans AB and BC. In this equation, we have to find area 1, x bar left, area 2 and x bar right. First, let us calculate area 1. We know the formula for the area of this parabola, 2 upon 3 into breadth into height. Here, breadth is 4 meter, height is 24. Let us apply them in the formula. Finally, for area 1, we are getting 64. Now, let us calculate x bar left. This is a symmetrical diagram. So, we can easily find the centroid distance to the left, 4 upon 2 we will get the centroid to the left. 4 upon 2 is equal to 2 meter. Now, let us calculate area 2. This is a triangle. We know the formula for the area of a triangle half into breadth into height. Here, breadth is 5 meter, height is 30. Let us apply the values inside the formula. Finally, we are getting 75. Now, let us calculate x bar right. In this kind of triangle, the centroid distance towards the left is L plus A upon 3 and towards the right is L plus B upon 3. Now, we are calculating the centroid towards the right. So, the formula is L plus B upon 3. Here, L is 5, B is 3. Finally, for x bar right, we are getting 8 upon 3 meter. In this equation, let us apply the values. L1 is equal to 4, L2 is equal to 5. Area 1, x bar left, area 2 and x bar right, we have already calculated. Let us apply all of them. In the point A, there will be no moment because it is a simply supported end. 
So MA will be 0. 0 into L1, we will get 0. After the calculations, we are making the first equation. Now, let us take the spans BC and CD and make the second equation. For BC, we have already calculated the ordinate. Now, let us calculate the ordinate for CD. In CD, we are having a point load acting on the center. The formula for maximum bending moment is WL upon 4. Here, W is 16, L is 3. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 12. Now, let us apply the theorem of three moments in spans BC and CD. Area 2, we have already calculated. Now, let us calculate x bar left. We already saw the formula L plus A upon 3. Here, L is 5, A is 2. After applying the values inside the formula, we are getting 7 upon 3 meter. Now, let us calculate area 3. For the triangle, area formula is half into breadth into height. Here, breadth is 3, height is 12. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 18. Now, let us calculate x bar right. It is a symmetrical diagram. So, the centroid lies in the center. The centroid distance towards the right is 3 upon 2. We will get 1.5 meter. In this equation, let us apply the values. L2 is equal to 5, L3 is equal to 3, A2, X bar left, A3 and X bar right. We have already calculated. Let us apply all of the values. In the point D, there will be no movement because it is a simply supported end. So, MD will be 0. MD into L3, we will get 0. After calculations, we are making the second equation alternatively using these formulas. We can easily find 6A x bar left upon L and 6A x bar right upon L. First, let us take the spans AB and BC. In the span AB, we are having UDL acting for the full span. Here, we have to calculate 6A x bar left upon L. The formula is WL cube upon 4. Here, W is 12, L is 4. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 192. Now, let us take the span BC. Here, we have to calculate 6A x bar right upon L. The formula is WB upon L into L square minus B square. Here, W is 25, B is 3, L is 5. When we apply the values inside the formula, we are getting 240. After applying these two values in the equation, we can make the first equation. Now, let us take the spans BC and CD. In the span BC, we have to calculate 6A x bar left upon L. The formula is WA upon L into L square minus A square. Here, W is 25, L is 5, A is 2. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 210. Now, let us take the span CD. In the span CD, we have to calculate 6A x bar right upon L. The formula is WB upon L into L square minus B square. Here, W is 16, B is 1.5, L is 3. When we apply inside the formula, we are getting 54. Let us apply the values inside the equation. Finally, we are making the second equation. Now, let us use the calculator and solve the two equations. After solving, we are getting MB and MC. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. 
Now we are going to calculate the reactions. For calculating the reactions, we have to separate the beam as per the spans. Here we are having three spans A, B, B, C and C, D. So we have separated the beam into three parts. In the span AB, MB will be acting in the clockwise direction. In the span BC, MB will be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. In the span BC, MC will be acting in the clockwise direction. In the span CD, MC will be acting in the clockwise direction. Now, let us take the span AB and calculate the reactions. In the span AB, there is only one moment MB which is acting in the clockwise direction. In the span AB, first I am going to calculate RA. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. The vertical reaction RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter, so 4 RA. The UDL 12 kN per meter is acting towards the point B in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. When the UDL comes, we have to multiply with the distance and the distance upon 2. Here the distance is 4 meter, so 4 into 4 upon 2. Then we have a moment 21.26. It is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. Finally for RA, we are getting 18.68 kN. Now using the rule, summation of vertical forces is equal to 0, we can calculate RB1. In the span AB, there are two upward forces, RA and RB1. Since they are acting upwards, both of them will be positive. The UDL is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance to get the total load. We have already calculated RA. Let us apply the value. Finally, we are getting RB1 is equal to 29.32 kN. Now, let us take the span BC and calculate the reactions. In the span BC, there are two moments. MB which is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MC which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to calculate RB2. For that, I am going to take moment about C. RB2 is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 5 meter, so 5 RB2. The point load 25 kN is acting towards the point C in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative and the distance is 3 meter. Then we are having two moments. 21.26 is acting in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative. 9.85 is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive. Finally, we are getting RB2, which is equal to 17.28 kN. Using the rule, summation of vertical forces is equal to 0. We can calculate RC1. Now, let us take the span CD and find out the reactions. In the span CD, there is only one moment, MC, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. By taking moment about D, we can calculate RC2, which is equal to 11.28 kN. Then, applying the rule, summation of vertical forces is equal to 0, we can calculate RD. In the point B, we have calculated RB two times. Let us add both of them. After adding, we are getting 46.6 kN. In the point C also, we have calculated RC two times. Let us add both of them. Finally, we are getting RC is equal to 19 kN. Now, we are going to draw the shear force diagram. I am going to calculate the shear force values from the point A and towards the point D. 
In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Here you can see the shear force values calculations. Using the values, we can draw the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. For making the bending moment diagram, first we have to make the free moment diagram, then end moment diagram. Finally, we have to combine both of these diagrams to get the bending moment diagram. To make the free moment diagram, we have to assume every span as a separate simply supported beam and calculate the moments. In this analysis, we have already calculated the ordinates. Using them, we can draw the diagram. Using the end moments, we can make the end moment diagram. To get the bending moment diagram, we have to combine the free moment diagram and end moment diagram. Then wherever they are alone, we have to mark here the free moment diagram, here end moment diagram, free moment diagram, end moment diagram, finally the free moment diagram. Wherever they are acting together, we are not marking anything, we just keep the space empty. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.